weren't able to be on. And then I'm going to go camera off and just start presenting my screen to you guys. Can everyone see that all right? Yep. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. So um, today we're talking all about what caregiver compensation and everyone on and we wanted to get Thank you for making you not care what it's been this last year. We never would have had the success we have had without you guys as the clients, the families, the caregivers, the support coordinators coming together to help make it not care what it's been this last year. Thank you for the support and it really means the world to us. The state of Utah has said that caregiver compensation is going to end in June 2023. We know this has been a major benefit to many of the families that are on this call, and it's been a huge way for parents and families to utilize their caregiving budgets for their child with a disability. Our hope and aim for this call is to collaboratively discuss action we can all take right now to advocate for caregiver compensation, hear from families who are personally utilizing caregiver compensation and how it's had a positive impact on their lives, and our plans to support families during the transition period if June 2023 truly comes to fruition. Lisa Thornton is a lawyer who works with Utah Parent Center and is the founder of the Utah Prader Willie Syndrome Association. She could not attend this call today, but has given us permission to share this information on her behalf. Lisa is putting together a coalition of individuals who have a vested interest in caregiver, caregiver compensation to band together and help make this a permanent option. The plan is that between now and March 2023, Lisa will be sending out scripts to individuals who would like to be included in this movement. Participants will copy and paste these texts and emails to the phone numbers and addresses that Lisa will provide. The individuals receiving these messages will be governor, the governor, senators, and other members of government. The hope is that with enough push from enough people, it will put this piece of legislation in front of them enough that they will want to take action and make it a permanent option for the families that it benefits. So what Lisa is asking is for everyone to identify who the representatives are, and you can do that by clicking this link, and we'll send all of this information to everyone after the call. But this link will pull up a map where you can put in your home address, and this is just the address we'll use for this example. Um, so it pulls up for this house, Carrie Ann Lysenby, and then it also pulls up Senator Stevenson. And so when you click these links, it shows you the address, the email, and phone numbers for these individuals, as you can see on both of these slides. And with the messages that Lisa Thornton is sending out, you can just copy and paste, grab these emails, and send it straight to the people that it affects most. So. Lisa will be sending emails out, and this is a template of the email that Lisa is sending. We can also forward this to you guys after the call so that you can copy and paste this into your emails. And it simply says, hello, my name is Lisa Thornton and you represent me. I have a child with prader willi syndrome and during the pandemic, caregiver compensation was offered to parents caring for a child with severe special needs. Many parents were able to keep their child in their home rather than opt for a residential placement saving the state significant funds. The governor liked the many positive benefits to families, and so he made this part of his 2022 budget. The legislator voted to continue the program through June 2023. Senator Harper and Representative Bailey Provost have a bill open for this next legislative session to make this a permanent option. I strongly support this program, and it has blessed our family tremendously. A survey sent to the families by the Utah Department of Health and Human Services shows this program relieves the stress of the workforce shortage, increases quality of life for these families, and an overwhelming majority are more secure financially because of the program. I want to make sure you understand the significance of parent caregiver compensation, so please contact me if you have any questions during the legislative session, and I will be happy to discuss any concerns you have regarding this crucial program and then you sign your name, your address, and your phone number. And obviously this was very specific to Lisa, but you can easily change out the name, diagnosis, and things to make it sound most appropriate to your situation. And if you want to be added to this list of people who are getting these emails, please reach out to us after this. Um, you can email us and let us know that you want us to pass your information on to Lisa 
or you can email Lisa directly at lisa at lisathorntonlaw.com. So should June 2023 become a reality, we plan to support families as best we can through the transition period to find new caregivers. We have a core level framework. We have families explore through our social circles to find those who are interested in caregiving. If the family goes through all their resources and are still unable to find a caregiver, we have hired and trained caregivers who are already working with Give.Care who are looking for more hours and more families to work with, and we can get families in touch with these caregivers to see if they're going to be a great fit for them. To wrap it up, we're hopeful in the efforts being made to keep caregiver compensation and think that the best shot we have in saving this program is by banding together as um, with as many other stakeholders as possible to make as much noise as possible around this cause. Parents who are currently using this funding have a great ability to tell their stories and the success they've had in an effort to save caregiver compensation as well. Your stories are powerful, so don't be afraid to tell those stories to the right people. If this effort fails and caregiver compensation is discontinued, we're confident in our ability to connect families to our available pool of caregivers and to help them acquire the staff they need so that in-home care can continue to be provided for their loved one. And we just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to discuss after the call, you can reach out to us at support at give.care and one of us can reach out to you as soon as possible. We do want to take the time right now to open the floor to Mark Hansen. He is a parent who has been using caregiver compensation with give.care for several months now. And um, so we wanted to open the floor to him. And then after he speaks, if anyone has any questions or comments or concerns that they'd like to make, we're gonna open the floor to you guys to share your experience as well. So we'll hand it over to Mark now. Hi. So um, I thought first that I would introduce ourselves really quick. Um, Jody and I are parents of uh, two sons, one of which has cerebral palsy and cystic fibrosis, that's Jacob. And we've been uh, on the SPD services for quite a long time, um, largely due to Jody's skill in navigating the complexities of of the system. Um, when COVID hit, things got really difficult for Jacob, um, especially with his um, personal worries and anxieties. Uh, <coughs> A big part of cystic fibrosis is that respiratory illnesses are particularly dangerous for him. So obviously hearing that there was a deadly virus going around, we had to ramp up our, our own family security while we also tried very much to maintain our normality. But for Jacob, he was quite terrified and his um, psychological anxiety went through the roof, went completely crazy. And it was a very difficult time for him. That was difficult for a lot of people in a lot of ways, but at one point I was able to um, come home and begin working directly with Jacob as my full-time job. And one of the benefits of that experience was that with me in the home with him, reassuring him, taking care of him, uh, helping him understand the, the science of viruses and vaccines, he was able to get his anxiety and his fears and his tensions under control. It took a while, but that was a beautiful part of it. Um, in addition, it allowed me to have the financial, and us to have the financial stability to commit that kind of care with my son. Now, before that happened, 
I was working in a lot of various other agencies and situations, and one of the challenges of those was always having me leaving my home to take care of somebody else's child. So we had to hire somebody else to come in to take care of our child. And a very common occurrence is that parents in this industry, because we are good at taking care of people, often end up coming into the world of caregiving. So that person then had to hire someone else to come and take care of their child and so on down the line. And there's been many other states who have implemented the uh, the practice of direct payments to parents and the legal guardians to take care of um, take care of the children. And so we're kind of hoping that we can convince our state legislature to do the same. Um, somebody's got to be paid to do it. Why not pay those who are most caring, most qualified, most immediate? Um, there's a couple of thoughts I've, I'm kind of curious of, of the folks we have here today, how many are parents, how many are industry workers and, and folks, what, what's the split? Click on the, the raise your hand if you're a, a parent. And I know there's some crossover too. Okay, so we've got about four or five of us who are all parents. And then, so at least half of us are experiencing this from a, a parent and caregiver perspective. And um, so that makes me wanna shift into a, a slightly different area as we talk about this experience. And that is neat for us, especially as parents, to reach out to our state legislators. Um, this industry is very unique in that it's one of the few businesses or industries I've worked in where so much of our policies and so much of our day-to-day -day management business decisions are made by law where it literally takes an act of Congress to change a policy. Some people joke about that, but in our industry, it's true. It, so much of what we can be paid, so much of who we can pay, who we can hire is determined by law, not just by convenience of management. And so we need to make sure that our legislators understand the indirect consequences of their opinions, and we need to let them know how we want them to help manage our lives. And um, Jacob and I have been involved, and uh, well, Judy as well, through her other jobs, have been involved in lobbying the state legislators for many, many years. Um, in fact, I'll post a link to a recording of one of Jacob's presentations to the state legislators when he was only 13. Um, that'll make a lot of you smile. He's got a cute voice from then. But at any rate, we, um, it's kind of a, a mixed feeling that I have regarding this effort. I wish that every family who had a child with a disability or the the state house with the legislator meets on the other hand i also know how overwhelmed it can be to be a parent of a child with special needs and to lay that much additional work on our shoulders can throw people completely over the edge all I know is that we need to all be aware of who our state legislators are, first of all, 
and know how they are voting and how they stand on health care issues, especially as they relate to special needs and and disability issues. And okay, thank you so let them know and vote accordingly. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing that. That echoes our thoughts I give care completely about banding together and um reaching out to these legislators. So thank you so much. Um, was there anyone else on the call today who had additional thoughts or experiences or questions or anything that they wanted to um, share and contribute? Well, if not, then I guess if not. Oh, sorry, were you gonna say something? No, I'm good, Jen. I was just, uh, I was about to, but no, I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Okay, um, well, we can go ahead and wrap this up if um, everyone is good here. But I just, again, wanted to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. And um, thank you, Mark, for sharing your experiences. And I will follow up this webinar today with um, a copy of the email that we shared with you all. And then um, we can get those resources to get in contact with Lisa as well. Mark, did you have one last thing you wanted to add? Wanted to throw this out. Um, there's an organization called the Legislative Coalition for People with Disabilities, and I just put their web page up. Um, they've been a, a very strong advocacy organization and i just forgot to mention them earlier so i put their website in the chat line so everybody can check out that address and become aware of what's happening they often do uh when the legislature is in session we'll do tracking of specific bills so you can see what committees are considering what things so you can actually become very aware of the intricate workings of the disability community and the legislature. Perfect, thank you so much for sharing that. And we'll add that resource to our list that we sent out after through an email as well. So thank you everyone for joining us today and we will see you guys um, next month. Thank you, thank Paige. You. Thank you. Yep, thanks everyone.